Revelation 3.16, Jesus says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. In this session, we're going to find out what he meant. Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another session from What Jesus Meant series. Today, we're going to uh, look at Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 where Jesus says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I myself have uh, heard many actually uh, take this verse and uh, use it in a condemning way uh, in the church. Um, but today uh, we want to see what it meant and uh, what is the depth behind this because uh, Jesus himself definitely said that his words are life. So there is no place that uh, we're going to uh, find out him condemning uh, or judging in a negative way someone. Uh, so, Rose, uh, what have you seen about this verse? You know, like, as you said, uh, this verse is one of those verses that it's been a lot of um, teachings on it, I would say. But, and also it has, uh, it, it has uh, some wrong understanding to it, too. You know, in this series, we're talking about what Jesus meant. So Jesus said a lot of things throughout the Gospels or even the book of Revelations that um, we need to understand them in a new way or a better way. So this is one of those verses that so many people ask that and we thought just to talk about it. So if we go to Revelation chapter 3 and uh, look at uh, verse 14, that Jesus is writing this to a church that is called the lukewarm so um, it, the church um, uh, the the lukewarm church is only a trans it's only a subject that the translation has a given title, that yeah. it's a title that the translation has given to this church but actually we can see from the name of the church what does this church mean basically if you look at verse 14 in Revelation chapter 3 it says and and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. The word Laodiceans means justice for people. Mm -hmm. So basically, Jesus is saying that he's writing a letter to a church that they were supposed to bring justice for people. Mm -hmm. And the reason is if we look at, at the end of this church, we look at verse 21, after Jesus goes through some verses and talks to the church about the issues that they have and um, then finally he says to him who overcomes I will grant to sit with me on my throne and I also and um, as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne so basically he's telling this church that okay so if you uh, overcome what I'm about to tell you, what I told you to overcome, basically what happened is, then you can sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. and, and the name of the church is the justice for people. That means this church, even though they were the body of Christ, they were in the authority, they were supposed to sit on the throne, on the uh, kingdom of their father and bring justice for people and do what their father did. But this church wasn't doing what they were called to do. Um, so I'm not sure if the word, uh, the title of lukewarm is the good title for this church, but we want to see what does it mean that Jesus says in verse 16 that, uh, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So we just want to, uh, we just want to look at the scriptures and let, uh, and let the scripture interpret another scripture. Uh, so that's why let's look at the verse before that and see what is he, what is Jesus talking about in the context? I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So Jesus, what Jesus is saying, okay, so, um, so you are something in between. You are neither hot, 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 or you are neither and you are not cold, cold, cold. If we, if we take a look at the word cold and hot, and if we look at the translation, like the Greek translation, and look at the roots of this word, it's very interesting that we, we, we see that the word cold comes from the word, the word uh, suhi, which is, you, which is used for, the, uh, for, uh, for translation of the word soul. Mm -hmm. So the word cold here, cold, it, it comes from the word soul. 
And if you look at the heart, it comes if you if you if you look at the roots of this word and study this word in the original language, we realize it comes from the word of spirit. Mm -hmm. So now right here, so it's not talking about the temperature wise church, it's talking about a um, church that is not fully in a spirit and that is not fully in soul. Mm -hmm. The church that has mixed the two together, you know, so it, it, um, they are not hot in the spirit and they're not even cold, cold in the, in the, in, to be in the soul. What they have done is they have taken some stuff from the spirit and they have mixed it with the soulish part and they have turned something that is lukewarm. So when we say lukewarm, lukewarm is, um, when we call something lukewarm, it's something that was hot, but over time has lost the heat. That's why it's lukewarm. So when we have a lukewarm, we, we usually, you know, when you have a lukewarm water, you usually expect to have a hot water but it has lost the heat mm -hmm. and that's why it's lukewarm. So now, um, so um, if we, so now Jesus is talking about, so here now we, we find out, okay, so there is a, there is a heart which is referring to the full, to the spirit. And he's talking about the coldness, which is referring to the soul. So you're saying that basically uh, the word uh, cold and hot are attributes of the soul and the spirit. So once somebody is cold, he's basically operating out of the soul. When he's hot, means he's operating out exactly. of the spirit. And when we say lukewarm, it's something in between, which means even though he's cold, he mm -hmm. seems to be uh, hot or he's basically trying to look like exactly. someone that is in the spirit. So, so now, like we can, as you said, we can look at and see what does it mean that you're lukewarm? That means you are hot and cold. Let's see, like look at verse 16, uh, look at verse 17, that Jesus continues talking and says, because you say, mm -hmm. I am rich, right? And let's jump uh, to the middle of the verse and do not know that you are Richard, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, and you are naked. So what does it say? It says, you say yeah. that you are hot, but what you really are is you are cold. Mm -hmm. You think you are hot. You think you are in the spirit. You say, you, your words are um, um, saying what the spirit is saying. So yeah. you say mm -hmm. you are in the spirit, but what happened is no, actually the truth is you are not. So basically, he says that uh, you are saying, but before that he said, I will vomit you out of my mm -hmm. mouth. Uh, because, I mean, it's not possible that somebody would be in his mouth, right? Right. Nobody can be in somebody else's mouth. Yeah. So when he sa Jesus says, I will vomit you out of my mouth, he must be speaking uh, in metaphor or figuratively, trying to say there is something that is in my mouth yeah. that is from you yeah. that... Uh, has two options yeah either to go in yeah into my stomach meaning I will eat it or I will send it out which yeah. means just to vomit it out exactly so that's why if we look at the verse um, uh, if we look at verse 20 that Jesus says behold so he's still talking to the same church yeah. and he says behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door so Wait a minute here. So Jesus is standing at the door and knocks. So he's standing at the door of the house of mm -hmm. a person. Yeah. It's, he's standing at your door and he's, he's, he's knocking at your door. And then he says, if you open the door, then I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. So basically, he, this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, okay, I come to your house so, and if I come to your house, then you are the one who's going to prepare the table. Then you are the one that was making food, basically. Mm -hmm. And then we will sit together and we will eat. So, as we see here, Jesus is talking about eating. But a few verses before that, he says, I will vomit exactly. you out of, I will spit, I will spit out uh, from my mouth. So, what, what are we seeing here? What we see here is there is something that this church wants Jesus to eat. Mm -hmm. 
And Jesus says, no, I am not going to eat it. So we'll talk about it shortly. What is that basically? Yeah. But we'll talk about it shortly. But if we want to just follow here, it says, okay, so because Jesus says, I'll come to your house and we dine together. And that means the one who's going to prepare the food so that both of us can eat, this is you. This is you who's going to prepare the food basically. But now Jesus in the beginning of the, speaking to this church, Jesus is telling him, no, 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 no. What you want me to eat, I am not going to eat. And I'm going to spit that out of my mouth because you are not hot. Mm -hmm. Because you are lukewarm. And we want to see shortly what does that mean. But if we take a look at here, that we see the similar story of um, uh, similar story that happened in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter mm -hmm. 3. That's right. We see a man and we see man's wife. And here we have the church as the bride, as the wife, and we have the husband, the Christ, that is our head. The head is the husband and the body, the church, is the wife, basically. So what happened was in Genesis chapter 3 is the wife came to the husband and offered something to eat. So those of you who know the story in Genesis chapter 3, it's the, it was the woman who gave the man to eat and Adam ate it and we all know according to Romans chapter 5 when, uh, when uh, like because of what Adam did the disobedience that Adam had caused death reigning and caused many things happen that was not supposed to happen so basically the corruption came to the world because the head listened to the wife or he ate or ate uh, uh, or because what did God say exactly? What did God say? God said, because you heeded the voice mm -hmm. of your That's wife. Right. In Genesis chapter 3, God told Adam, because you heeded the voice of your wife. He didn't say, Adam, because you ate the fruit. But he said, because you ate it, the voice, you heeded the voice of your wife. So what is he saying? What Adam really ate, it was the voice or the words of his wife. Exactly. So Jesus now standing here and he says, well, the same thing that happened in Genesis between husband and wife there, between man and woman, it's not going to happen here. I am not going to eat the words that you want to put in my mouth. Yeah. Because we saw what happened because you, the words that you, I will come and eat with you later on. But the reason I come and eat with you later on and I eat of your food because you heeded my voice. Exactly. What did he, uh, verse 20 told us? Because you heard my voice, then we can dine together. So basically what he's saying is, you know what? Because you have heard my voice, your voice becomes my voice. Mm -hmm. And what happened is we can, uh, now we can eat together because now we are sharing the same words. We are sharing the same food together. That's right. So basically what exactly what you said was even we can see that in um, Jesus talked because people came to Jesus and told Jesus, OK, you know, um, um, why don't you wash your hand? You know, the food you are eating, you know, if you eat a food with the unclean hand then it, it makes you unclean. Uh, unclean. And Jesus said, no, no, no. What goes into your mouth doesn't make you unclean. But what comes out of your mouth from your own heart, that makes you unclean. So what does it mean? That means what comes out of your mouth is your words. Exactly. Your words become your food. And if you eat that word, some of them make you unclean. Some of them defile you. So what we see here, even Jesus said you can't, uh, a good tree cannot bear bad uh, fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. But how can you who are evil speak good? So we can see constantly here the fruits that we are eating is the words that we are speaking right. or the words that we are hearing. So here in Genesis, Adam heeded the voice of his wife. So that means he believed what his wife said. He ate what his wife offered him to eat and he ate the words of the woman and the corruption came to the world. But here Jesus says, no, I am not going to eat what you want to give me, something that is the mixture 
of the soul and the spirit, but I will eat with you if you heed my voice, because the moment you heed my voice, then you speak my vo words, basically. So you're saying that uh, the story that we read in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus speaking concerning vomiting out of his mouth, is what we read in Genesis 3 about the story of God, uh, the first man, the first woman, mm -hmm. and the two trees. That's right. And he said that there is only one tree you can eat from, uh, but when the woman ate from the forbidden tree, right. she also gave that to Adam. And Adam was supposed to refuse to eat what she gave him. Mm. That's exactly what Jesus does here. He says, now church is my Eve and I refuse to eat of what you give me. That's right. And in the, uh, in the story of the garden, what, um, what basically she gave to Adam was nothing less than her words mm -hmm. so here what the church has given to jesus and is in his mouth is again some words yeah which definitely are not the truth mm -hmm. but something that looks like the truth yeah and we've seen that over and over and over how actually religion or how religiosity or how zeal for god without knowledge produces that kind of word mm -hmm. it's something that seems to be like the word of god but it's not it's just uh, brings forth death. It's like, let's say the words of the law, how they uh, produce death rather than life. Mm -hmm. And the story of the garden was about the tree that would bring life That's or right. its fruit would have life or a fruit that would mm -hmm. basically uh, bring forth death. That, that, exactly. So that's right. So that's why it's interesting because now Jesus is writing to this church and this church was supposed to bring justice for people. And the justice that the church was supposed to bring is was supposed to sit on the throne overcome and sit on the throne and bring that justice mm -hmm. or the judgment, the righteous judgment of God that we talked about it in, the, uh, in this series. Um, so we already talked about the righteous judgment of God. So, so, and it is all, all of it, it's referring to the words that we are speaking. So what happened if we look at, um, if we look at um, verse 17 again, it is because you say, I am rich, have, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. What does it say? It says, Jesus said, you are saying to me, you are rich. I'm not going to eat that. I am not going to believe that. I am not because I know that you are not. So what am I going to do? I'm going to vomit that out. I'm not going to eat what you are trying to put in my mouth. Even though you're thinking we are dining here, but we are not. Because the food that you're putting in front of me, I'm not eating. So Jesus is talking about the words that we are speaking. So this church is saying that I'm rich, I don't need anything. But actually, in reality and in the truth, they are, they, they are poor. But we just want to see, and they look at next verse, and we just want to deep a little um dive, you know go deeper into it that what does it mean i am rich mm -hmm. what is he talking about here but uh before that let's look at verse 18 i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and what and white garment that you may be clothed and the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes salve that you may see so we don't have time here to go through every single words that Jesus bringing here. The only thing that we want to see here and all of them that is mentioned here, the white garment and the, uh, you know, the, uh, to, to cover your nakedness and the eyes that can be open. All of this, it is referring to uh, something that is happening internally inside of man that brings man into an understanding of believing something and speaking something and living what the man believes. But I want to look at one thing here and maybe we can uh, and move on from there. If we go to uh, James chapter 2 and see what James says in his book. Um, so look at uh, James chapter 2, uh, verse 5. It says, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith 
and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him, heirs of the kingdom. What did Jesus say to that church? If you overcome, you will sit on the throne. Yeah. Where is the throne? Throne is in a kingdom. And what do you do when you sit on the throne? You reign. That's right. How do you reign? You reign by the words of your mouth. That's you, right. But, but how is, but how, how is going to happen? It says when you are rich, there is no king. All kings of the kingdoms, they're trying to be rich. Everybody's trying, to, uh, the kingdoms, they want to be rich. They want to be powerful. And here tells us that, you know what? The richness of a king in his kingdom is the faith. That's right. As we talked in the previous session that Masu talked about, that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of the truth. The truth is what is reigning and ruling in the kingdom of God. But we must fight for it. Because, and that is, that is our wealth. When we fight for something, we fight to be rich. <laughs> and that wealth that we have, that fight that we talked in the previous session, is the faith. That's right. So here James talks about and says, you know what? Um, God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. So who are the poor of this world? Those are who are poor in faith. Yeah, in spirit, in, in a faith, spirit, yeah. in faith. But God has chosen them so to and make them rich in what they never had in the world. Yeah. Which world? The world that is not of above. So we need to be rich in 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 faith, uh, and and this is how we can uh, be the we can inherit the, basically the kingdom of God. So when Jesus says, "Because you say I am rich," but then He says. Uh, you're not rich, mm -hmm. but then he says, but I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich. Right. None of those things are a um, natural, uh, basically, representation. Mm. They are all spiritual or Understand. there is a spiritual understanding and meaning behind it. Be gold is a spiritual term. Um, yeah. uh, fire is a spiritual term. Uh, lukewarm is a spiritual mm. term. Mm -hmm. uh, being rich is a spiritual term. All those things, they have nothing to do with, let's say, somebody that is uh, wealthy or rich in this world in terms of like finances. Right. Uh, every one of those things have a deeper understanding. Now, it says, because you say I am rich in faith, but you're not. Mm. You, you're very poor in faith. You haven't yet arrived. You haven't yet achieved, but you think you have arrived. Right. So what is a lukewarm is someone that actually uh, says, but he's not. Mm. He says, I am, but he's not. Let's That's say right. even you say, I'm a son of God, but you haven't fully manifested mm. being a son of God. You haven't reigned and judged and uh, served like a son of God. You just say it is like just a confession that I'm a son of mm. God, but there is no... Uh, there is no action or there is no decision toward let's go on, let's move mm -hmm. on toward actually making this a reality. Mm -hmm. So when he says, because you say, but you're not, that's when we understand what a lukewarm mm -hmm. is. Now he says, they're, they're, not that this is, this is something to condemn. Right after that, he says, I counsel you. Because mm -hmm. he says, now I can give you something that can really make you rich. That's right. I can give you gold refined mm -hmm. in fire. That means there is something that is no impurity in it. Mm -hmm. Like gold is the purest form of metal mm. in this world. And he uses that to say what I give you even is more pure than that. Even that very small residue mm. of any impurity is gone um, from the gold that I give you. And that makes you rich in the faith mm -hmm. and you know we can even like as you said we can see that actually in the in first peter that first peter talk about the gold maybe we should go quickly uh take a look at uh first peter chapter one and uh, uh, let's look at um look at verse five who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while 
if need be you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it tested by fire right. so you know what peter did here peter Com, had brought this comparison. He brought a natural means and brought a spiritual understanding to it. It says your faith, it's like a gold that is uh, purifies, that is tested and purifies through fire. And, and even it's better than that yeah. because even gold is perishable, yeah. but your faith will never perish. So what, as you said here, so what we see here is so the gold refined in fire, it's referring to the faith. To the faith. So Jesus yep. tells to the church, counsel and buy from me this gold. So what is he saying? He says, have my faith. Because this is the faith, that the, the, what I'm going to give you, it's the faith that I'm going to give you, which is refined through many fires, yep. refined through many temptations many uh you know um it's gone trials through everything yeah. Have, yeah many trials have it's gone through all the trial trials and let's guess what it has come out refined so i want to counsel you and buy from me this buy something that i have done it not that you think this is you are but in the truth you are not exactly so get something from me look at my look at what i have i come and receive things from me exactly. rather than thinking that you already have it and when he says come and i counsel you to come and buy from me gold refined in fire now the question is there is nothing more valuable than gold and there is nothing more valuable than gold that is purified. That's right. Right? So how can I go and mm -hmm. buy from him? Mm -hmm. He says, if I counsel you, mm -hmm. through my counsel, you can buy this from me. Now, the question is, okay, but what does it mean? Uh, can we go to Isaiah 55 yes. mm -hmm. quickly and just look at uh, uh, the amazing words that Isaiah says in uh, Isaiah chapter 55? Mm -hmm. and just compare it with what Jesus says. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1, it says, uh, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the water, and you who have no money, come, buy, mm -hmm. and eat. That's exactly the context of Revelation chapter 3. There is something that Jesus says, I'm not going to eat, but later he says, but I'm going to come, in and dine That's with right. you. Yeah. Now he says, you say that I am rich, I am mm. uh, basically, uh, but you're not, mm. you're poor. And then we realize the richness and the poorness is in the faith. Now he says, if you buy from me uh, gold refined in fire, you can be rich. Mm -hmm. Now here he says, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Mm. What does it mean? By grace. Mm. How can you buy? By grace. Yeah, yeah. that's How it. can you have? By grace. Mm. What they were do, trying to do? They were trying to become rich by their works. Mm -hmm. What does Jesus say? It's not according to works. Mm. It's according to faith and that's by grace. So when you actually come to me, you can receive. If I counsel you, you get my knowledge, you get my understanding, mm. you get a revelation of what it means to actually be clothed with right. white garment. Mm. You get an uh, understanding of what it means to see mm. uh, because you use ISAF. Now, mm -hmm. every one of those uh, terms are drawn actually from the story of Adam and Eve. That's because right. they, their eyes were opened, they saw their nakedness. Now here he says that there is again the story of I mm. and nakedness, but then I that sees and nakedness that is covered. covered it's yeah. not anymore. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus basically is trying to say is taking us back to the story of Adam and Eve, now in the form of Christ and the church. Mm. And through that to show us that never ever uh, the body of Christ should live by their own 
words and teachings and understanding yeah. but they have to submit to the head which is Christ mm -hmm. from Christ from the head comes life to the body from him comes nourishment to the body he's the one that holds all things together and when the the church as the woman gives something to eat mm -hmm. to him that is not according to from his tree it's not according to the tree of life he's not gonna eat it he's gonna refuse it because then once he refused that, then he can come and dine with us and he would give something to us which is out of himself. Mm. We must eat that one. So there is that change of uh, me saying, I see, but he says, no, you're blind. Now let me open your eyes to All see. Right. You say, I am covered, but no, you're naked. Mm. But let me come and cover you. <laughs> You say that you're not anymore hungry, yeah. but you don't know that yeah. you're actually hungry. Let me come and give that to you so you can have. Exactly. And so what we can see really in this church is they lack, uh, they lack faith. But the, but the reason they lack faith, it's not because they, they know. It's because they think, no, actually they're good. Yeah. They think that they, are, they have arrived. They, they, have think, arrived, yeah. they think they have achieved it all. They think, okay, no, I already, I already got everything I needed to have from, uh, you know, from my head, the Christ. And, but here Jesus says, no, no, no. So um, the whole purpose for the church is to bring justice for people. And, and the justice that you can bring is by sitting on the throne and reigning through the words of your mouth right. and fighting, fighting through faith. So you have the sword of truth in your in your hand or in your mouth and then you have the shield of faith basically and you are fighting in this battle because you are bringing the kingdom of god down and it's interesting so it is he, jesus is saying okay you as a woman uh, i'm not going to listen to you because as the church you're supposed to listen to me that's why i am knocking at the door so if you hear my voice that's right if you hear my voice then I will dine with you. So that reminds me of what Paul, the apostle, apostle Wright, uh, wrote basically in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I think it's a good place that we can just talk about this a little and then we can just wrap up this session. Uh, so Paul, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, he writes to Timothy. He's the young leader in the church. And he writes to Timothy and he says, and look, at, look at verse 11. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission so what are we seeing here he, we are seeing the woman the church is supposed to learn in silence and in submission to the head that's true who's the head the christ so the woman is supposed to receive hear the voice learn in that's silence true. rather than bringing her own opinion so the other day I woke up and I felt like the Lord, like I heard this sentence from, from, the, from the Lord and, um, and I heard the Lord says, the greatest stumbling block in the kingdom of God, it's your opinion. If you have opinion on something, that becomes your stumbling block because it's important to you. But what happened is, no, we need to learn to leave the opinions behind and hear what the Spirit is teaching us. Now, if we move up, uh, before we move on, so Revelation chapter 3, it looks like this church had some opinion. Yeah. This church had some beliefs. That become the teachers. That, be, yeah, you know, and, um, and you know, it is lukewarm because it has some spirit in it, but it has some soul in it too. It is not hot in the yeah. spirit, basically. So that's why here Paul writes and he brings the same understanding in a different way of saying it. And um, so look at verse 12. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. So. If we go back to the book of Revelation and look at the seven letters that Jesus, Jesus wrote to these churches, the letter that we are talking today is the, the, last, the letter to the last church, the seventh church, basically. But if we go and read it, we see that Jesus is telling to, the, to one of the churches in the book of Revelation that there is a woman that is teaching in the church. And he is referring to Jezebel, the false prophetess, a teacher. So what is he referring to is the soulish understanding of something. 
Okay, why do I say the woman is the soul? That's another long teaching on it. But I want to bring this, that we are the body of Christ and we are the and Christ is our head and we are the body of Christ. But on the other hand, in Ephesians chapter 6, we read 5, we read that it says that Jesus is the savior of the body. Yeah. So the body needs salvation. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, we see that the salvation is the salvation of the soul. Mm -hmm. So basically what we see is woman, it's the symbolic of the soul, the soulish way of understanding the, the, the natural way, the earthly wisdom, the earthly understanding. Because in Genesis, it was the woman who gave to the husband to eat. And, and when she ate it, she thought, if I eat of it, I will be wise. That's right. So now we see here, okay, so, uh, the, so what is, what is uh, the Apostle Paul is talking here that the woman is not supposed to speak the church as a soul in front of the husband as the spirit is not supposed to teach the husband. Right. It's supposed to learn from the husband the spirit and stay in silence receiving the teaching of the husband or the, the head which is the spirit. That's why right after that verse 13 Adam comes to the picture. For Adam was formed first then Eve and Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. So so here's the same, same picture that we are seeing here, that it is, it is the woman, the church, that needs salvation. And that's why Jesus comes to the church, uh, the, the Laodicean church, and Jesus tells that church, if I eat what you are giving me, I have done what Adam has done. And the end is going to be even worse than what Adam has done. Death but for everyone. Death forever. Instead of having eternal life, yeah. then we, we would have eternal death, right? But what happened is Jesus says, no, I am not eating. So as a woman, you better listen to my, I, I vomit out, I spit out the words that you're trying to put in my mouth to believe because I know what you are saying. It's not truth. Yeah. You think you are rich, but actually you are not. So you're saying that when Jesus says, I will vomit you out of my mouth, that doesn't mean... I will send you to hell. No, of course okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's, uh, that brings us to the end of this session. And um, of course, there is much more into this, but uh, we leave it at this point. And uh, please, if you haven't signed up for our uh, newsletter, uh, go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash sign up. Uh, you'll get a free ebook and you can also um, be notified whenever our uh, basically upcoming courses are live so you can go and register you can take benefit of um, the teachings because it's going to be um, as the last session rose said that we are working on a course uh, that we are going to teach the book of revelation very systematically and it's going to be we believe a few years at least that means we're going to be very foundational and once for all we want to lay down something for the body that can be used and it's not going to be, um, uh, by the grace of God, it's going to be all that we need yes. uh, from the book of Revelation. So it can, there would be more depth after that in the coming years. Thanks again for watching and uh, the love of God, the Father be with you. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video today. If you did, will you do two things? Number one, share with somebody else. And number two, click subscribe button below. You will get notifications every time we release a new video. And by subscribing, you support us, our ministry, our message, and this channel. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash sign up. And sign up. You'll get a free ebook called Unveiled Word, a simple guide to understand the Bible. You'll also be notified about new articles, about our ministry updates, and our upcoming brand new online courses. Make sure to subscribe to our new podcast, Perfected by Blood. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you can find a podcast. It's an exclusive place where we share our thoughts about life, about the Word of God, and our advice for you as you seek to live a transformed life. 
It's called Perfected by Blood. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're ready to take your life into a whole new level, to go deeper and go bigger in God, make sure you grab my book, The Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. When you order your copy, you're really supporting our ministry and the message we carry. And you'll also be getting a book that it will reveal to you how you can stop trying to fulfill God's supernatural plan for your life through natural means. Instead, you can receive the power of His mercy through deeper understanding of God's compassionate heart. This book helps you to change your mind, believe in God's goodness, receive His involvement in your day-to-day -day life, and finally, lift up the burdens off of your shoulders. It's called the Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. Thanks for tuning in.